all my life, for the rest of my life. All of my life, for the rest of my life. I'll be loving you. In here. For you. I'm going to be loving you all of my life, for the rest of my life. All of my life, for the rest of my life. I'll be loving you. Hi, Sean. Thank you for joining. I call it worship. Hello, Melissa. Thank you for joining. Sorry about the delay. Give me, give me, give me purpose. No ever Everything is I ain't stepping down off this work. Well, hey. Be here. I feel forever. Let's just be clear. I'm in love with all my life. The rest of my life. All my life. For the rest of my life. I'm in love with you. All right. We're going to stop. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Sorry about the delay. Obviously, I do have something to do today, but it's not as early. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Everyone wants to live a life of enjoyment. Everyone wants to live a life of health. Everyone wants to live a life of peace, but no one has figured out how until now. The answer is simple. Alignment is key. Alignment is key to living a life of enjoyment. Alignment is key to living a life of health. Alignment is key to living a life of peace. And when I speak of the word alignment, I'm referring to your spirit, your mind, and your body all working harmoniously towards the progression of who you, 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 and you were created to be. I am Jane S. Green, your spirit, mind, and body strategist. And I invite you to take a walk with me along this spiritual journey I call life so that together we get to rediscover who we truly are spiritually mentally and physically thank you sean for joining hi casey thank you thank you thank you for joining we're gonna go ahead and say our prayer if you will bow your heads father god i thank you so very much for this opportunity to be used by you father god i ask that you increase while i decrease Father God, allow your Holy Spirit to take permanent residency within me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Father God, I ask you to guide my every thought, my every word, and my every move. Father God, I ask that you bless each person who pops on, who logs on, who watches the replay. Father God, meet them right where they are. I ask that you bless each person with excellent health, abundant wealth, and unspeakable joy. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Blessed Saturday morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Today's foundation scripture. Hello, Michelle. Thank you for joining. Comes from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 15, and it reads thusly. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. And that comes from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 15. Okay, knowledge is the new currency. And in order for us to obtain this new currency, which is knowledge, we're going to have to do three things. Hello, Torah. Thank you for joining. Those three strategies that we're going to have to implement begins obviously <clears throat> with studying God's word. <clears throat> We're going to have to ensure that we spend time studying the source, the source of all things, and that is God. Everything with me, it begins with that foundation, which is God. One of the things that we oftentimes do Whenever we encounter a concern, a problem, an issue, we always go to other individuals. And those individuals, they provide us with information and the advice may be beneficial. However, when you truly want to know the truth, the answer, you need to go to the source. God is the creator of all things. He created you, he created me. So anytime there's an issue with us, we need to make sure that we go to the source. Obviously, God is a spirit. We cannot see God. <clears throat> we can hear him and we can sense his presence. 
So we're going to have to go to the Bible. The Bible is his word. And when we go to the Bible, we study and God is able to reveal those things that we need to know in order to get where he wants us to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did take my ginger shot this morning. This is a side note. And I forgot to drink my water. So um, if someone would be so very kindly and bring me some water, that would be nice if they hear someone's in the kitchen. <clears throat> Nevertheless, first step that we want to do in order to obtain this knowledge, which is the new currency, the new way of getting things done and accomplished in this world, we're gonna have to first study. Thank you. We're gonna have to first study the source, which is God. We're gonna have to go to his word and we're gonna have to spend time in his word and in his presence. So that's step number one. Step number two is that we're going to have to master our mind. Now, the mind is powerful, but the mind is not all powerful. There's only one all powerful, and we just talked about the creator, which is God. People think that you cannot conquer or master your mind. You most definitely can. It's mind over matter. And I do not want to negate the power of the mind. It's, 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 it's quite something. But you have what you need in order to master it. The first thing you want to make sure you do before you tackle this particular challenge, you want to make sure that you understand how it operates. And for the most part, not in all instances, but for the most part, our minds operate in a similar fashion. Our mind controls our body. And I'm not sure if everyone knows that information, but it does. Anytime you say or think, move your arm, your body will automatically obey. If you say, I am thirsty, just like I was two, three seconds ago, I put my body into motion to seek some water so that I can quench that thirst. Your mind controls your body, but you can control your mind. Oftentimes, whenever I'm doing my Facebook Live, and I know I have somewhere else that I need to go, and then that time may begin to shorten, my mind would want to go very, very fast so that I can get through this to go to the next thing. But... I've learned that whenever I slow down, my mind surrenders. So you're gonna to have to understand how your particular mind operates. There are some things that our mind do, our minds do that are in common, but then there are also some things that our mind do that are just unique to us as individuals. One of the things that I use to master my mind is meditation. I love the exercise and practice of meditation because it slows my mind down. And whenever you're able to slow your mind down, you're able to process what is going through it, what you're thinking. So the practice of meditation is one of the main, one of the main exercises that I do to master my mind. And once you're able to meditate, you want to think about, ponder on things that are good. Remember, whenever you think about you bring about into your life. So if you want good to come to you, you're going to have to practice thinking good thoughts. And after you have come to the realization that you can master your mind and that you can think good thoughts, you want to ensure that you continue to Tell your mind what to do and not allow your mind to tell you what to do. Oftentimes, whenever we get into the rat race of life, very, very busy. And I know this time of year, we're, I guess, engulfed in all of the other things, sometimes worldly things, buying gifts, preparing the house for guests and things of those nature. We tend to go into autopilot but you want to make sure that you're still cognizant of what you're thinking and what you're doing day in and day out, regardless of the season that you're in. But eventually you want to come to a spot or a point in your life to where you have no thoughts, which is um, quite achievable. 
Third step is going to be, you're going to have to rebuild your body from the inside out. And one of the things that I've come to appreciate is that all of these things are, they work in unison. You can do just that first step, which is studying the source, which is God, and God will lead you to the other areas where you need to improve on. And if you do that, that's phenomenal. But then he's going to lead you to things that will allow you to become and to fulfill who he has ordained you to become and the purpose that he has ordained for you to fulfill. Whenever you get to the physical aspect of yourself, you want to ensure that you have to work from the inside out. And sometimes we want to work from the outside in, which doesn't yield permanent results. And whenever you're dealing with your physical body, whatever you put into your body, that is what you eventually become. In December, I think it's like the 14th or 15th of 2015, is when I last enjoyed meat. And I remember this day so vividly because I was with um, several other individuals. And one of my favorite foods was meat lover's pizza. I used to love eating meat lover's pizza. And this particular day, there are like maybe 12 people at the table with me. Get my slice of meat lover's pizza, it's hot, and I know it's going to be absolutely delicious. However, when I took my first bite, it was like not very tasty. And I wanted to spit it out. I wanted it to go anywhere but down my throat. But I couldn't because it's like 14, 15 other people who are eating, and that would not be very um, pleasant to see someone else spit their food out. So I made myself swallow that first and last bite of Meat Lover's Pizza. And from that day, December, let's say 14, 2015, I lost my taste for meat. Prior to me adopting the pescatarian diet, I wasn't very nice, wasn't very kind, wasn't very patient with a lot of people. And I also had issues with individuals in authority. And I've now come to understand one of the reasons why I had those issues was because I had trust issues with people. So when I adopted the pescatarian lifestyle, I became patient, I became friendly, and I became kind. And people who knew me prior to that pescatarian lifestyle, they thought I was being submissive. And it wasn't that I was being submissive, it was just that I was in a space of allowing and in a space of trusting those individuals who were in positions of authority. I would question them oftentimes and not think very highly of them, but those were some issues that I had to deal with and I had to work through. So when I entered the space of allowing, um, I enjoyed it. Um, some of the others didn't really like me in that sense because I was so vocal and sometimes aggressive and I don't know, sometimes I thought I just, I was being a jerk. So nevertheless, for the past four years, I've been on that pescatarian lifestyle and I like the changes that came with what I was putting in my body. And whenever you're able to change whatever you're eating, you're able to change who you are and how you show up in the world. And I like those changes, but there were still some areas that I need to work on. And whenever I'm having conversations with God, I'm always asking, not for things, material things, I'm asking for um, intangible things, those uh, permanent life-giving things, such as wisdom. And however he gives that to me, I willingly accept. So in November of this past year, well, last month, I was introduced to the alkaline lifestyle. And um, I've heard of it before. I just wasn't, I guess, ready for it prior to um, November. And well, the alkaline lifestyle is primarily a plant-based lifestyle that doesn't have any meat in it at all. And I was open to it. So um, I tried it on for a size and loved it, still like it. And um, I, I continue to, to evolve. Who I am and how I show up is, is different and it's also better. One of the things that I love about this particular diet 
well, lifestyle, not a diet, lifestyle is that I have um, clarity of mind in a way that I've not had before. Things are crystal clear now, whereas before they came in a little clear, but not as clear. Another thing that I love about this lifestyle, the alkaline lifestyle, is that I'm able to absorb information a lot easier and a lot faster. And one of the instances, if you know me, you know I love learning, you know I love to read, and I read books often, all the time. And one of the books I had already read before, something prompted me to go back and reread it. And as I was rereading the book, read it before, highlighted before, made notes in the margin before, but I gained like new insights and new information. And that was like mind blowing. When I knew, I said, I've read this before, but I had not gleaned the information that I had this time from reading that book. So I do contribute that partially to um, the lifestyle, the alkaline lifestyle that I am now currently embracing. Am I 100%? No, I'm not 100%. But um, that, that is the direction in which I um, tend to go. And when I called myself a spirit, mind, and body strategist, it's just that those are the three areas that I'm most infatuated with. Those are the three areas that um, I'm, I'm passionate about, that I love learning about, and I love sharing. And one of the things, of, of the many things that I love about God, is that when he asks me to do something, I do it. And as soon as I do it, he does what he promised to do in his word. And I don't know his promises, I wouldn't know his promises if I didn't spend time reading his word. So the more information that I share and I give away, the more information he allows me to obtain. And it's through a, a, a varied arenas, mediums. It's simple things that I am able to do and just learn. And oftentimes he does these massive downloads and I'm almost at a point to where, okay, what am I going to do with all of this information? Yeah, there are like five books that I have in my mind and outlines that, I've, that I have written. It's just finding the time to do those things. And the information, it's, it's fresh and it's different. And he reveals it to me in a different way to where it's presented or delivered in a way that people can receive that information. And it's, it's, a lot of it. So I'm going to continue to do these Facebook lives into um, next year and hopefully years thereafter. But um, my asking now is, okay, God, I have all of this information that you've given me. I'm going to need um, an avenue to, to give it to everyone so that they too can learn from it as well. So how to obtain, just to recap, how to obtain knowledge, which is the new currency. That's the new way, the new flow, the new wealth of life. And if you don't know better, you're not going to do better. And when you know better, you will do better. And oftentimes people don't do because they don't know. So the first thing you're going to have to do is obtain, obtain some knowledge. And I don't want each of you to take my word for anything. What I would prefer that you do is do your own research so that you will know for yourself and you incorporate what you feel will benefit you. Yes, be open to the information, but also research. Go back behind me and say, does she really know what she's talking about? Yeah, research it, read for yourself, find it out, implement it and experiment to see if it truly works. But just to recap, there are three strategies that you can implement so that you can obtain this knowledge this new currency and the first step is going to be always study the source study the creator of whatever it is that you are implementing and in order for you to know and obtain knowledge from life you're going to have to study god who created all things and spend time in, spend time in his presence and also spend time studying his word so the second part is to master your mind. Yes, the mind is powerful, but it's not all powerful. 
and you want to master your mind by meditating, particularly on things that are good, so that whatever you focus on, whatever you think on, you bring into your life. And whenever you meditate on good things, those are the things that you're going to bring into your life. And the third thing is going to be to rebuild your body from the inside out. And that's primarily being cognizant and conscious of the foods that you're putting in your body. And um, I did forget to mention the two types. The two types of foods are uh, the fake food, which is the food that is a distraction. That is the food that actually prevents you from fulfilling the purpose that you were put on this earth to fulfill. And the second type of food is the healthy, life-giving food, which is the food that you can go out and pick and you and you can eat it as it is. Those are the life-giving foods. Um, you want to limit, and I know we all have to take baby steps. You want to limit the number of processed foods that you take into your body, as well as um, those foods that are saturated with fat and sugar because that too is an addiction. So make sure that you do those three things. Um, think about those things. We're nearing the end of 2019, getting ready to enter 2020. And you wanna begin kind of deciphering through the information that has been presented, but also moving closer to what it is you want to do differently. And Remember to take small steps so that you don't get overwhelmed and you give up completely. So when you take those small steps, you'll be able to um, make a permanent lifestyle change to your life. So, uh, Kat, how are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Frida, hi, thank you. Jeanette, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Daria, love that you're here. Hi, Mom. How are you? Cody, how are you doing? It's great to see that you are on. Thank you. I'm grateful. Renee, hi. Thank you for joining. You've been a regular. I've been noticing. Angela, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Hi, Miss Lenore. Oh, thank you. Miss Lenora was one of my Sunday school teachers when I was growing up in Bastrop, Louisiana. And she has asked me to be a um, guest speaker at her church for her organization in January. So for those of you who are going to be in Bastrop, please stop by. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Pastor Jackson, how are you? Frederick, how are you? Thank you all so very much. I'm grateful and I'm humbled by um, your continued presence here on Saturday morning. But um, closing time, know that life is the gift that keeps on giving. And every day you are granted the opportunity to open your eyes, visualize the life you desire to see. And you do that by keeping your spirit aligned with the one and true spirit, which is God. By keeping your mind stayed on things that are good. And by keeping your body in a constant, consistent, and conscious groove. Remember to love the person in front of you. Remember to love the person behind you. Remember to love the person to the left of you. Remember to love the person to the right of you. And know that I love each and every one of you. Go out and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous Saturday. Spend some time in nature, and I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you.